Hi and welcome to this review of the Scorpion Tank from Airfix in well it depends where you look in some places it's 172nd scale in some places it's 176 and originally I think it was just listed as H-O-O-O -O gauge so not too sure what scale it is either way it will look great next to 172nd scale aircraft and there's a little bit of a story around this kit and also a lot of frustration that will go with this kit. Just a side note, next week's video will be in a slightly different format, so hopefully it'll be okay for you guys. Um, I'm just trying to make these videos more interesting for you. So this is going to be first in the series called like, Things I Never Thought I'd Build, because I never really thought I'd build tanks. Um, I mean, let's be honest, I never thought I'd build anything except an aircraft, a fixed wing aircraft. So doing this on its own is actually an accomplishment for me I guess so yay to me <laughs> I wasn't really sure whether or not I was actually going to do this tank I bought it mainly out of sentimentality like a lot of models for me my dad bought me one of these um I can't remember where he bought it but I know I went inside one I want to say it was at a car show and I just I don't know I fell in love with the tank and ever since then I've always wanted to build one I just never got around to it and I think I had one again in my old collection that unfortunately is now lost to the ethers of time so when I saw one available on the Facebook group I was like hold on a second I need to get this <laughs> so I did <laughs> and it arrived and I instantly built it and I, I don't think I've done that for quite a while where I've got a kit and straight away I'm like yep yeah, I'm gonna build that tonight I threw like all my schedule out the window just to build it it did lead to some frustration. Um, we're gonna get onto that. <laughs> building it, to be honest, so far there, I actually found building it really, really enjoyable. Uh, I, I don't know if we'll really properly witness the moment though, though. So the turret obviously should be free rotating and unfortunately I did break the little nib on it um, because I wanted to test that it fit properly and unfortunately it's pretty much a case that it should go in and then not come back out. Um, I took it out and it snapped so my turret does not rotate but it's fine it's just going to sit on my shelf so I'm not too bothered about it overall. It, I found putting the wheels on to be kind of a pain you have to dual layer them. I don't understand if on a bigger scale they're not as fiddly and therefore they're more fun. At this scale I did not find it a massively enjoyable experience but I guess it's quite rewarding when you get it finished at the end. It's not the fr most frustrating part though, and I know most of you who built tanks before already know what I'm going to say. You, you in particular, you know what I'm going to say, don't you? <laughs> and you know which bit is the most frustrating part. But we'll get to that in good time, but I've alluded to it a few times already. So I did take this off screen quite a lot, and it's because there are a lot of small parts, and I was just trying to make sure I got them right, and I was using my tweezers a lot, and it was just, the, it was quite fiddly, so forgive me for not showing it all on screen but once I got the base done it was then a case of putting the I don't know what you call them gear assembly wheels I don't know the bits that the tank tracks go around <laughs> glued together with the base which then meant I had essentially the body of a tank that leads us to um this bit <laughs> tank tracks what we've alluded to a few times. I have not done these before. I have no idea how to do them. I was trying to use poly cement because that's what the instructions told me. The instructions were lying. <laughs> Very nearly swore that. Yeah, the instructions were not um, accurate. In fact, uh, at one point, I think it's actually almost coming up, I tried to use, yeah, I tried to use pasta and I ended up going to my corner shop to get um, super glue in the middle of a stream because I was so frustrated with it and that didn't work um, yeah it's it's really not clear and I, I don't understand I mean I get that these would look good when they're on the model but for someone who doesn't actually know how to do these it's really an unpleasant experience I I, I, I promise you I nearly quit doing this model and I, I've never done that. I've got one one model that has been on the shelf of Doom since I started doing modelling again this year. And that's it. Otherwise, I've made sure every model is finished and completed and reviewed and a video is done of it. I don't leave anything else behind. 
this very nearly got me to the point where I just stopped modelling again. Like, um, obviously it wouldn't have been permanently, but it, it got me very, very upset because it, it wasn't a cheap model for me to get. I don't have a lot of disposable income. Um, and so when, when this went wrong, I literally went on eBay to look at getting a replacement one to get a replacement tank track. And we'll go into that in a sec. And I couldn't get one. Not without spending, I think it, I think the cheapest I could find at the time was like 15, 16 quid. And then postage on top, so it's really, it's like 20 to 25 quid. Honestly, it was madness, and I, I was very upset during the stream. I remember feeling so frustrated because I felt like, yeah, this is going really well, the tank looks amazing, and then nearly giving up. I, as you can see, I did get a lighter because um, I thought we had to melt them together. So I was like melting the ends to try and join them, and that didn't work. Eventually, I did Google it, I uh, looked on Reddit, and it was basically said use a screwdriver that you can see there use that, heat it up really high with a flame and then press the tracks together. It did sort of work. There is a track on the model that has that. We do have two tracks on there but there's more to this. Yeah we got one that one did they go on and um, unfortunately one of the tank tracks was just completely destroyed during this process. It is a learning curve. Even right now I feel quite annoyed at having to have that happen. In my opinion, through no fault of my own, because I, I just had no idea that that was going to happen. I did find a, um, I had a spare tank downstairs, it was a Sherman that I had no intention of ever building. As a result of that, it was going free and I stole the tank track from it. And it did, that did work, and I was able to eventually melt two tank tracks, two tank tracks, onto the model, um, as you can see. But they do not look the same. They don't have the same style on them. They have different depths and thicknesses, so it looks really awkward. As you can see, though, I I did get there eventually, but it really, really, really did hamper my overall progress on this model kit. Um, it it did put me off tanks for quite a while, I'll be really honest with you, this was very nearly a things I never build and never will again because it, it was so angering and upsetting and frustrating. I, I don't think I've ever felt that way about a model kit. I think the only time I've ever felt even similarly close to that was when someone destroyed my model kit. So yeah, it, it, it was quite... <laughs> quite draining, should we say. And I know it sounds like a real first world problem, and it is a first world problem, but at the same time, it, it, it was really just frustrating. So what you can see me doing now is I'm stuffing paper clips into the um, actual model kit, uh, or into the tank base, and that's because I'm trying to weigh it down because the tank tracks are really like spongy and bouncy. So I wanted to try and weigh it down, so hopefully the tank tracks will be on the floor. Um, it didn't work. The the model still hovers. <laughs> it is what it is at the end of the day. I wasn't going to go back and try and cut the tank tracks and then make them fit. I, once they were on, I was just like, fine, they're on, that's it. The weird thing is it's not even just the Sherman one that's too big, it's the Scorpion one. So even if I'd done it properly the first time, it still would have been too big, I think. So. I don't know if I'd done something wrong or I broke something, but it just seemed to be way too big. Painting it, however, I found a lot of joy. It, I basically followed what was on uh, the box. Uh, so I went over with, uh, I think it's just a dark green first of all, and then I used black. I didn't think it would be black, but I did it whilst the model was still wet. Um, it blended slightly, and honestly, I think I got a really good result on this one, which surprises me because, you know, I'm not a tank person, I don't love doing tanks, but I really love the result I got. If it wasn't for the hovering nature of the tank, I would say this is a really well done kit. I just wish I got the tank tracks bloody right, but never mind. It is what it is. I cannot change it. The decals I also thought were really cute. Um, you get to put like a little number plate on, which is adorable. So I guess we're pretty much at the end of this, huh? Um, again, next week going to be a slightly different format. I've actually filmed this after next week's, so 
I already know what's going to be different. I mean, you can see something here that's different. So hopefully the next few weeks you're going to see things change and hopefully be more enjoyable for you. But if you've liked what you've seen, please hit subscribe. It really does help me out. Drop a comment below of what kit you'd like me to build next. Join the Discord if you want to talk to other model makers and share what you're currently doing on your projects and follow me on Twitter because maybe I'll go over there at some point. And obviously if you want to watch me build these live, head over to Twitch as Ms. Modeler. Bye! Thanks for watching the video, I really appreciate it. Hit the subscribe button if you enjoyed what you saw here today to see more content as it comes. You can also follow me on Twitch at twitch.tv slash to watch me play these games live and chat with me. See you later, bye!